video 4 of this Windows 7 tip series. Drag and drop notification icons. The redesigned notification area displays a minimum number of icons. All other notification icons are moved to a side window. And what they're talking about here is these. Okay. Um, rather than using the customized options to select icons for the main display, you can drag and drop icons from the side window to the notification area, which I think is really cool. Um, for example, this net talk one here. Like if you know how you, before in Vista and XP, um, you used to have to customize the options and then go in there or customize the taskbar and then hide certain ones that you don't want seen all the time unless they're being used or whatever. Now instead of having to go through all that, let's say this net talk one here. I don't want it to show all the time because I like it. I like to keep it clean. I like my my audio and my network um, status up there. So and then all the other ones are hidden. So what you can do is just take it and drag it. There you go. Pretty simple. Um, simplify cloned machine setup. You can't run Sys Internal's new SID utility to change the identity of a cloned Windows 7 C uh, machine, either a virtual machine or image PC. Instead, create a template installation, then run Sys Prep with a bunch of uh, switches they show here, but I'm not going to go through it. Clone or copy this virtual machine file. When it launches, it will get a new SID and you can fill in the name. The reference for building unattended script files is at tinyurl.com slash win unattend. Uh, I haven't messed with that stuff, so um, just thought I would share that though. Snap that arrow. The Windows key is great for all your shortcuts, which I completely agree. I use that thing religiously. Um, now you can use it to work with the new arrow snap feature in Windows 7. Select the window, hit the Windows key, and a left or right arrow to snap the window to that half of the screen or use the up up arrow to snap it to the top of the screen. Now what they're talking about, let's go ahead and open up some windows. Uh, notepad. Okay. Let's go ahead and minimize these now. Now what they're saying is right now, since down here in your taskbar area, um, let's let's count over to the to the command window. One, two, three, four. If you want to open that one real quick, hit the Windows key and the number four. Okay, and what let's hit Windows 5. There's your notepad. The other ones are sitting on my other screen right now. In fact, I can probably close Outlook. But um, cool little feature. And let's close those. Okay, shortcut the taskbar. The Windows key is great for shortcuts. You can select the Windows key and a number to correspond to items on your. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I got these reversed. <laughs> the one I, did, <laughs> you know, I just went to the gym. I had tons of coffee and pumped up. So okay, the one I just showed you was what I'm going to read you now, and then I'll show you the snap that arrow. Sorry, shortcut the taskbar. The Windows key is great for shortcuts. You can select the Windows key and a number to correspond to items on your taskbar. So if, um, for example, the Notepad blah 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 is the third icon on your taskbar, not counting the start button, you can hit the Windows key and the number key to launch. Okay. Now let's go to the snap arrow. I'm going to show you that one. I already read it. Um, let's take a window. Man. Okay. Uh, let's say we want this one. Actually, that's kind of a bad one. Let's do notepad. And as you can see, I use the window key, the instant search option, all the time. Okay. So now let's say we want this thing to, to be displayed over here. Okay. And right now I turned off that function where it automatically does it, but I'm going to hit the windows key. Oh, and it won't work right now because I turned that off. If, if I wanted to, to, to hug the left side, I would hit the windows key and the left arrow. Same thing with the white right arrow and same thing with the top and bottom. Sorry. I forgot to turn that option off. Okay. Browsing private. Now, uh, here, I'll go ahead and read it to you. A new feature in IE eight is the ability to open the browser in a in an in private browsing session that allows you to perform banking and so forth from a public location without fear of leaving behind any residue ie will not retain anything you do in an in private browsing session you can perform this action if you are already within ie by selecting the safety button let's go ahead and open this and then in private browsing what they're talking about is here safety and then in private browsing and you can see it opened up a new window and it says in private here in the url box so another way the way i do it uh, and a little side note, I don't use IE. I only use IE on websites that were um, built and tested for IE only. But uh, there's a shortcut, and I'll show you here if you go to safety, and you can see the little the little hotkeys options right here. So I'm going to hit Control Shift P, um, Control Shift P. Oops, get out of there. Control Shift P, and there you go. Same thing. Now I use Chrome, and in Chrome they have the same option, but um, you can hit Control Shift N 
for new. Oh, and then you can see the little little inspector gadget guy there, or whatever you want to call him. Uh, it's here in private browsing. Okay. Go live. Many applications installed on past versions of Windows have been removed, starting with Windows 7. These applications and other others uh, not typically installed with Windows have been moved into the Live Essentials downloadable applications at download.live.com. These applications include Messenger, Mail, Writer, Photo Gallery, Movie Maker, Family Safety, and f a few others. Now, I've only installed this Live Suite one time, and I'm just not into the whole MSN thing and the Live thing and all. I don't know. So, uh, you guys go ahead and play with that. Remove apps. Although some applications have been moved off of Windows to become an optional download, other apps such as IE8, Media Player, Media Center, and DVD Maker are still included. In times past, especially when it came to IE, the applications were tied into the OS. However, in Windows 7, you can easily remove them if desired. Head to the Program and Features applet in the Control Panel. Now again, I use our uh, instant, sh inst uh, instant search, and we're gonna. I'm gonna just type in Program and features there you go hit enter and what did they say here uh, blah, 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 blah. oh turn windows features on and off uh, then you can select the checkbox and select the ones that you want um, to install or not install and just a side note this is where the remote server administration tools options are when you with windows 7 it's different than vista or xp before you used to just download and install the msi file i think it was msi and uh, it would automatically show if you're managing a network, it automatically show right here, but now it doesn't. When you install it, you have to come over here and enable some features, and you can see I enabled these because this is my home network, and that's what I manage it with. Okay. Um, are you Windows 7 experienced? System Properties has a related or a rating called the Windows Experience Index, WEI. This rating is a collection of five different ratings that are determined by the Windows System Assessment Tool, WinSet. The highest rating score is 7.9 compared to 5.9 in Vista. Using the categories of processor, RAM, graphics, gaming graphics, and primary hard disk, the final rating is not an average of all the ratings, but the lowest of the subcomponent scores. Now what they're talking about is you can get to it a couple ways, is I use the hotkey window key and the pause break key. So I hold the windows key down and hit the pause break key. And here you go, this is my score right now. Um, yeah, it could be better. But if you go in there, you can see where your lowest point is, and right now it's my graphics. I am running an NVIDIA, uh, what am I running, 9500 GT, uh, it does okay, but anyways. Uh, and I think that, that'll be it for this video. Stay tuned for more.